Hello, uh, so this is intended for my CEC 112 section, and so I just want to go through and, and solve uh, the first Python problem, the computing the hypotenuse of a uh, right triangle, and then I'll solve the second problem uh, in another, another video as well. And so the hope is I'll just solve it, I'll share it with you, and then hopefully that's more useful than uh, any comments I might otherwise make in your homework solution once you uh, submit it. Okay. And so problem one, we're just asked to so we're going to print, um, you know, right triangle calculator, ask for input from the user in terms of leg one and leg two, and then it wants us to calculate the, well, up here it says hypotenuse, but we can calculate the area, hypotenuse, and perimeter, and, and print that all to, to disk. Okay. So, all right. So in another tab, I just have Replit open. Okay, and I've got my, you know, some material here. Okay, but I'm going to create a new uh, Replit. And so I'm going to call this uh, week two. Well, I'll call it Python week one problem one. Okay. Okay, cool. So I'm going to load up main. Okay. And then if I look back at the problem, so I want to start by just displaying a right triangle calculator. And so display right triangle calculator. Remember the fancy name we give to that is is print, right? So when I was, uh, you know, before I learned how to program, when I thought about print, I just thought about printing to uh, paper, right? Using a printer, right? But print, right, is also the word for printing to display or, or displaying uh, information, right? And so I start typing tip, tip, yeah, print, right? I already get my help that tells me that I've got some function, right? My function is going to take an argument, so I put uh, two parentheses to specify the argument. Okay, in my argument, I'm going to list a string. So I put my single quote or my double quotes in. It ended it. Okay, and what do I want? The string I want to display is right triangle calculator. Right triangle calculator. Calculator. Now, remember in the spirit of incremental uh, development, if you're unsure about this first line, is well, I'll write it. I'll run my program, right? It properly displays right triangle calculator. All right, cool. I'm going to move on from here. And kind of the idea behind incremental development is I'm going to write my code one line at a time, or I'm going to, you know, write some small part of my code, run it, test to make sure make sure it works. Because then if there's an issue, right, I can isolate that error or issue, that bug, right, to just those couple of lines that I've written uh, since I last um, um, tested my, my code. Okay, so it properly shows right triangle calculator. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the user to input uh, leg one uh, and leg two. Okay. And so how I'm going to solicit input is, well, I'm going to solicit input. I want the user to specify you know, the length of leg one, and I want to assign it to uh, a variable. Okay. And so I'm going to write it, and then we'll try and explain it. So I'm going to say leg one, I'll just call, or actually, let me call it A, right, in line with thinking about uh, you know a squared plus b squared equals c squared all right so a the length of leg one I want to solicit input okay and so the input that I want to receive is enter leg one okay so I'm gonna write enter leg one colon so that'll be displayed to screen I'm gonna put a space okay just so it's um, there's a space before they they enter now we need to convert this to float but I'm going to keep this as this just so I can demonstrate that to you. Okay, so I want to show you a, a mistake, right? So then we can we can fix it. So input, so I'm going to first prompt the user, enter like one. This should appear on screen. They'll enter like one. It'll get assigned a variable A. And so again, with these variable assignments, the way I think of it is you can't see my fingers I put it on the screen, is but I, I cover up what's to the left of the, you know, the equal sign and what's to the left. So the first thing Python is going to do is it's going to evaluate what's on the right, which is you know solicit input from the user, which will then input on screen. So then say the user inputs a value of 3, that value of 3 is then going to get assigned to variable A. Remember, an equal sign is a variable assignment. So the user enters a value, it gets assigned to the value of A. So wherever I see A anywhere else in my code, Right, Python's just going to, you know, interpret that, or it's going to replace that with whatever that value is that you specified. Okay. Now there is an issue with this, but I'm going to demonstrate the code, right, and then you'll be able to see exactly what that is. Okay. 
Then let me also get leg two. So I'm going to do input, enter leg two, bam. Okay. And then I'm just going to add the two values together just to see what the, what the issue is. So I'm going to call it sum AB. It's just going to be equal to A plus B. Okay, and then I'm just going to print to screen um, sum AB. Okay, just so you can see what we've got going on. Okay, so I just saved and now I'm going to run. Okay, so I get right triangle calculator. I click over here. Okay, and I will use three and four just like they they have there. So three, enter, four, enter. Okay. And then when I sum AB and print it, I get 34. Well, that doesn't make sense, right? Another reason for doing incremental development so I can test to make sure my code's working the way it is, okay? That doesn't make sense, right? And what's going on here is on line two is by default with input, when I specify a value, Python's reading that in and storing it as a string, okay? So when I enter three, that's being assigned to variable A and it's being treated as type string. Okay. Same thing when I enter value 4. So then when I add these two strings together, I'm essentially just catenating them. So if I have a string 3, you know, 3 and it's treated as a string, 4 is treated as a string, and I add them, I'm just catenating the two of them, um, sticking them together, and that's how I get 3, 4. Okay. All right, so how I'm going to overcome this is on line 2 is I also need this float command, so this float function, float parentheses, the argument will be my input command, right? So I use float to take the uh, input, which um, Python's reading in is treating as a type string, and I'm going to convert it to type float. Okay. Now, um, so in terms of jargon, so string, you could think of as like a, a word, right? Um, so they're treating, you know, three, it's like a, a textual word, right? So text. A float you can think of as a number which includes a decimal point. And then there's integer, which is int, int, which would just be, say, that number rounded to the nearest whole number. Right? Don't mind my message to go get my kids. I'll, I'll get them on time. Don't worry. Okay. So I'm going to do that float. All right? Float. Okay. Cool. So I'm going to save that. And now when I run it, okay, and I specify 3 for leg 1, and 4 for like 2, I get 7, right? And that makes sense, right? Because 4 plus 3 is 7. Now, I said I could also make this an int, right? And so just to show you, if I make this int, okay, int means convert that, you know, input to a, a type integer, okay? And so when I run it, I type 3 and then 4, okay, I get 7. Not 7.0, I get 7. Okay, why? Well, let me... Oh, my face is in the way in terms of... Oh, never mind. I say my face is in the way, but I, I got it. I thought it was covering it. But I say that because if I were to run it and I make this 3.1, right, it, it... Why doesn't it like that? Right, it doesn't like it because it's, you know, I'm, I'm getting 3.1, right, but it's, you know, it wants, it wants an int, right? And so, hey, hey, it doesn't like me at all. Okay. All right, so let me delete int okay and let me make that float again because I don't care if my input is a um, integer or not and then I'll be consistent with here right I know they're using floats because you know I have um, you know 6.0 for the area 5.0 for hypotenuse and 12.0 for uh, the perimeter all right cool so now I can delete this since I know I'm properly reading in um, the value of a and b and that they're um, floats so they're going to be uh, used as I would expect them to use. And now I'm going to calculate the hypotenuse uh, area and perimeter. I'm going to do the calculations first and then I'll go ahead and I'll print the results to, to screen. Okay. So in terms of calculating hypotenuse Okay. And we'll do hypotenuse two ways. Okay. And actually, let me calculate the hypotenuse, display it, because then I'll show you two different answers. Okay. Well, two different ways to, to get it. So hypotenuse, I remember uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. All right. So c is the square root of a squared plus b squared. Okay. So to get the hypotenuse, I'm going to calculate a squared. Okay. Now remember to get 
you know, a squared, you know, a raised to the power of two. So typically we think about caret, but exponentiation in Python is going to be this double star. Okay. So this is a squared plus b squared. Okay. okay now Python does, you know, do order of operations. Oh, it's complaining because I, I typed the caret and it's telling me, hey, it's probably not what you want. Okay. So I've got a squared plus b squared. And I want the square root of that. So how I'm going to get the square root is I'm going to raise it to power of 1 half, which will enter as 0 0.5. Okay. And then I'm going to print. And I'm just going to get the hypotenuse in there first, just so I can show you two different ways to, to compute it. So hypotenuse. Okay. So hypotenuse. So first I'm going to display a string um, that's going to say hypotenuse and a colon and that's going to be followed with my numerical value of the hypotenuse which I just computed and stored to this variable hypot. Okay. So if I run this and leg 1 is 3 and leg 2 is 4 I get a value of 5 okay, which agrees perfectly with this. What I want to show you for, for comparison is here I, I rose it to power of you know, uh, 1 half, which is the same as taking the square root. If you want to calculate the square root, you can. Okay, but I need to import okay, the math package. So first I need to import math. And then to compute the square root, okay, it's not just SQRT, okay, but SQRT, the square root function, Right, is part of this math function. So it'd be a math dot square root. Okay. You can ignore the comment here in terms of ordering it. Right? That's you know a later topic. We're just doing very basics here. Okay. So if I wanted to use a square root function, there is one, but I need to load the math package because square root's part of the math package, and then I can use the, the square root function. Okay, so from there I can run so three four and I get the same answer as five everything's consistent and so you can use you know raise your you know raise this to power of 0.5 you could use the square root function both are going to give you the same answer right so what you do is is your choice all right but I've got hypotenuse um, we also need area and perimeter so let's go ahead and, and let's compute those okay so area it has been a long time but I believe the area is equal to one half uh, a plus b is that right um, yeah so it's you know half of the area of the corresponding rectangle okay so a rectangle would just be you know a times b okay we're going to be you know one half a times b so i'll do 0 0.5 times uh, a times b okay cool so it's going to be half a times b there and so then I'll print, and so I'm going to print, double quotes, I'm going to first print the string area, okay, I'm going to add a space, just so there's a space, so then it's going to display the number that I've assigned to area, so I'll print the area, okay, cool, and the last thing will be perimeter, right, and I should also note when I'm running this, right, I'm using 3 and 4, because when I get my answer, I could compare against this, which I know to be the correct answer, and I can use that also to check my code to make sure it's working right. Okay, and so let's get perimeter. Uh, so the perimeter, so the perimeter is going to just be equal to a plus b plus c, right? The sum of all the sides. Okay, um, and well, I, it's not c because here I I'm a rule breaker and I call a hypotenuse. So let me make that C, let me make that C, and so now I've got C. Ah, not class. All right, I said I was going to call that A and B because it's A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So let me, let me get that. Okay, so there's my perimeter, and then I'm going to print perimeter do followed by the value of perim. Okay, so that's hypotenuse, that's area. And hopefully that's good. So now I'm going to save it. I'm going to run it and hopefully get the same answer. So, whoop. And so 3, 4, and then I get an area of 6. 
and a hypotenuse of 5, and a perimeter of 12. All right. Cool, man. We got it. Okay. So that's it. And, you know, again, just a couple of points is in terms of this idea of incremental development, right? So what it is, it's just a matter of I'm going to write one small piece at a time, okay? Run my code, um, make sure it works, write a little more code, run it and test it. Um, and then this way, you know, if it works at point one and then it doesn't work at point two, it's, well, it must be whatever I did between point one and point two, okay? Um, and, you know, if I want to use a square root function, right, then I need to import math, right? And square root's part of math. Um, you know, it could complained about my order, and if you look, one of the nice things about my IDE is even though I ignored the uh, comment, it automatically, you know, reformatted for me, okay? All is good. Um, last point is, as I've been running this code, I've been using the same numbers here, and so I can use that to check to make sure that my code is, is working correctly, okay? Hope that helps you if you had any issues with the uh, first problem. If you have any other questions, uh, let me know, and I will try and post a link to this replit file um, along with the video online so that you have it there. Let me know if you have any questions.